God bless you, Facebook and YouTube. How you doing? It's a Wednesday morning, 6 a.m. Central Standard Time, 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. God bless everybody and welcome to Divine Insight Ministries. I am Apostle Robert Jenkins and as always, me and my wife like to take out the time to say thank you and God bless you for all that you do and how you support this ministry. Welcome to Divine Insight Ministries. God bless you this morning, son. Love you, man. Love your wife. Love your family, man. Love you so much. Sister Rita Tate, God bless you. Statia Crockett, God bless you this morning. God bless you. Got to call you. Um, there's some things laid on my heart, so I want to share with you what I believe God is doing with us. God bless you, Sister Ross. God bless everybody. Sister Amanda, good morning, good morning, good morning. Go ahead, hit that share button. Share this on your page. Also, invite people out. Good to see you, cousin. Invite people out. And uh, if God laid on your heart, please do a watch party. Please pray about being a watch party member, I guess I would say, <laughs> or a, mar a watch party uh, partnership. We need people to do watch parties for us all during the day. We're trying to get this word out as much as possible, and I want people to do it constantly. I would, I, lo I love to look on Facebook and see watch parties, and so you just, you, you don't have to just do one in the morning, but you can do one in the evening, in the middle of the night. Uh, you wake up, you're listening to it. Whenever you're listening to the word, uh, go ahead and do a watch party and, 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 and start that connection, okay? It's very important that you start connecting to your brothers and sisters, and a watch party is a good way to do that, all right? Also, visit our website, www.divineinsightministries.net. Also, we have a group page on Facebook. We have a ministry pray page. Hit that notification button so you can be notified, okay? And so, good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. God bless you. Go ahead, hit that share button, share this on your page, and keep us in your prayer. You know, we're talking about uh, wake up church, there's sorcery in the house, and so we want you to cover us in prayer. So God bless everybody this morning. We're doing a part four today. Everything is updated. Um, I believe uh, all three sessions are on YouTube, uh, part one, two, and three, and so you can go to YouTube and watch those. For those who watch us from the foreign countries, you have a different time zone from Africa, from China, from UK, uh, you'll be able to watch it as well on Facebook, okay? So please keep us in prayer. A couple of things I want to do as the announcements uh, this morning. First thing is that God has laid on, my, on our heart to start an intercessory team, prayer team, an intercessory prayer team, okay? And Prophet James Summers uh, talked about this yesterday in his teaching, and so I knew it was confirmation that I'm looking for a prayer team, an intercessory prayer team, okay? And so if you, uh, if that's been laid on your heart to begin to pray for this ministry and all the ministries that's tied to Divine Insight Ministry in some form or fashion, we want to build a prayer team. I want you to pray about that. And if you feel like God has laid that on your heart to be a part of the prayer team, we'll be praying every Thursday. We're going to have different teams so that we won't we won't we won't wear you out, okay? And so we're gonna have probably four teams of of intercessory prayer, okay? Four teams, probably seven people on each team, okay? And so if you led, I want you to pray about that first and make sure there's confirmation in your spirit uh, with that. If that's the case, and you feel like God is calling you to be one of the prayer warriors on the prayer team, Divine Insight Ministry prayer team, then notify me or my wife inbox us and let us know. I've been in prayer. I feel like there's a confirmation in my spirit to be a part of your prayer team. And and once you do that, we will notify you. We, we will be meeting at least once a week with each team on Thursday nights. I think I'm going to establish it for one hour. We'll be doing actual prayer together, not over the phone, but we'll do a conference line where we can see one another, some kind of Zoom or uh, messenger where we can see one another. But I want you to be in prayer, okay? Because it's time for us. We're about to launch out even greater and do greater ministry. And so we're going to need that covering consistently. And so I'll be doing some teaching. I'll be doing some things uh, to, to, to really get you to understand what God wants for Divine Insight Ministries. But first, let's start first. So if you if that's laid on your heart and you say, I, I believe I, I'm part of that, ministry, that prayer team, that Divine Insight Ministry is starting, uh, you pray about it. Make sure there's confirmation in your spirit, okay? Uh, God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Because we got to learn how to be a part of things because we're led and not because it's available, okay? Not because we're... Not because it's available, but because I'm led. You got to be called to it. So then when I put the accountability and the responsibility on us all, 
there should not be any resistance because you've said God called you to this. And so that's very important, okay? So please do that. Inbox us. Once you pray and ask God, am I supposed to be a part of the intercessory team of Divine Insight Ministries, okay? Uh yeah, video conference is better, yes. And so we'll do that so we can see one another and have eye, con eye contact with one another. Um, and then just let us know, me or my wife in boxes, okay? So let's get ready. Good morning, everybody. Prophet is Michelle Summer. God bless you. Tell your husband. Uh, he's probably in, in the truck driving. But uh, tremendous. If you didn't get a chance to listen to uh, In My Father's House yesterday, powerful, powerful teaching by Prophet James Summers. Powerful, powerful. I think that's one of the largest numbers I've seen up front of people coming in and listening. And so I've been praying for that ministry to grow and grow under his leadership. And I, I see that now. People are starting to come out and, and understand what God has in this man's mouth. And so we thank God for that. If you didn't get a chance to watch it, go back to In My Father's House and watch the teaching on yesterday. Powerful, powerful, powerful teaching by a great man of God, Prophet James Summers. Okay, so let's get ready to go into prayer. We thank God for all that he's doing. Go ahead, hit that share button. Share this on your page. Invite people, start your watch party and be led by the spirit. Father, we bless you for this great day. God, we know that you are the God of everything, the moon, the stars, the sun, and we bless you for it. But most of all, you are our Lord and our savior. We can call you Abba Father. Oh, God, you say when you pray, say our Father. Thank you for the oneness of this ministry. Thank you for the calling. Thank you for the, for the assignment you have put on me in my wife's life and how you have called us to be stewards over this. So we want to be faithful to it. Allow us to have pure dreams, pure thoughts, pure motives in everything we do. So when it fills it through us, it never poisons the people. Bless them right now in the name of Jesus. We send angels to our mind, north, east, south, and west. God, we bless you for this move. I feel the power. I feel the clarity. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Wisdom, we are listening. Holy Spirit, we thank you for leading us and guiding us. We are in total submission to the will of the Father, and we thank you. Thank you for your mercy and kindness. The word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. No woman formed against us shall prosper. We thank you, Lord, that you're constantly moving us and we learn how to flow in the spirit and never to be never to be redundant, but always to be fresh. Give us a fresh word that challenges us. Oh, God, until we change, until we transform, until we look like you. We bless you for every leader, for every man of God, for every father, mother in the ministry, or even the grandparents. Thank you, Lord, for clarity on how to do this how to structure it, how to establish it, that it looks like you. Oh, God, thank you, Lord. Block us from every frequency, every vibration that tries to bring us back into traditions. But let us stay faithful to the sound of heaven. And we bless you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Okay, let's get ready to go in. Hit that share button. Part four. Um, wake up church. There is sorcery in the house. Um, uh, we probably going to be talking about this for a while. God has given me so much to say. And so, uh, just stay with us and be patient. But we, as we go, we're going to go deeper and deeper into the different layers of sorcery. Okay. We're still coming out of Exodus chapter seven verses one through 13. This is where we pulling our points from. This is where we pulling the revelation from. Uh, we're pulling it from Exodus chapter seven, verse 13. We know that Pharaoh assigned the midwives to destroy the babies, all male children that were under the age of two were destroyed. And he even told them that when the, uh, uh, when the women begin to give birth, uh, if it was a male child, kill it. And I talked about yesterday from this spirit, this is sorcery at its best, uh, from this this mindset and the spirit that came out of Pharaoh, he turned people who should have been delivering babies to become killers of babies. And this is a form of sorcery in this church today that there are people that God has assigned and has called and give great gifts and discernment to. But because of false or because of loyalty to leadership and not God first, because of loyalty to leadership and not God first. Whenever you're not willing to lay your life down for God, you'll end up laying your life down with man. 
Anytime you're not laying your life down for God, you will lay your life down with man. One of the greatest forms that make sorcery available is your level of dedication to the voice of God. When you're not totally totally committed to the voice of God at all costs, this is what God was saying when he said you have to hate mother, father, brother, and sister to serve him, to walk into the kingdom, okay? Brother Leonard, thank you for all that you do, man. And as I begin to quote these scriptures out, put them up as you always do. So I want you to put that scripture up when it says you have to hate mother, father, and brother, and sisters, okay? And so those who are watching, I want you to also watch the comments with Brother Leonard because a lot of things that I say, he gives the scripture, okay? Because a lot of times I don't go to all the scriptures and tell you where they is, but he's that person that does that for us in the ministry, okay? And so this is, when God was saying that, he was saying that so that Sorcery would not catch you because one of the ways that sorcery works is through soul ties, family soul ties, husband and wife soul, soul ties, uh, pastoral soul ties, any illegal or unlawful uh, soul tie, the enemy will pull you. Even Mary was being was being used by the enemy to bring sorcery upon Jesus. But Jesus corrected every time. Even the first miracle, he said, have my hour not come yet? You see, he had to let her know, I'm not moved because you told me this. I'm moved because God would tell me. Grace is what stepped in and turned the water into wine. But he did not let Mary, watch this, use sorcery on him. Okay, and many times that happened because of natural needs. And I'm going I'm going to talk about a lot of stuff because sometimes it's just where you are in the natural and you don't know that your needs to have a natural need can cause sorcery to operate in your life because you're moved out of your needs, out of your emotions, and you're not moved out of God or out of the spirit. So sorcery looks for opportunity to lead you, to control you without you knowing that you've been controlled. Okay? Very key. This is why if you're driven by your emotions, sorcery can work in you tremendously because it can use your emotions to control you. Very, very key. Okay? And so this is very important. And so God God challenges us by saying, man who loses life shall find it. If you have a, if you desire for your own life and want things your own way, sorcery can come in because it will offer you the kingdoms of this world. This is all deceptions to get you under the control. But you notice the devil said, if you worship me, it was all about if you worship me, if you worship me. Okay. And so you have to understand this in sorcery and you have to be so dedicated to God, so committed to God that if I have to lose my position, if you take my license, if you put me out the church, if you never call me again, I'm going to take what comes along with it, but I'm not going to go against God so that I can be under another person's control. That's the key to it. In every scenario, okay, even though I'm talking a lot about the local church, but really these principles are across the board, okay? They deal with family, they, they deal with marriage, they deal with your employment, they deal with every phase of life, of life, okay? Very key. But you have to be dedicated to God. And so a lot of times, because you wasn't sold out for God, you wanted that position so bad that you let sorcery work. You wanted to be married so bad that you allow sorcery to work. You wanted children so bad that you wanted, you allow sorcery to work, okay? You wanted a new a car. You wanted a nice house. You wanted things, your desire for things. This is why the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. And be very careful what you want because you won't make an, a deal. You will negotiate your your life, your soul, your emotions, your intellect, your passion. You will sacrifice these things to get certain things in life. And before you know it, you have negotiated with sorcery at its best. And so it's very key that you understand that. If you're just coming on, please hit that share button. Share this on your page. And remember, we are sowing where we're going, okay? And so I want to talk about that. And so point number one is he fights the next generation, we base that upon that Pharaoh uh, assigned the midwives to destroy the male children. Uh, the reason why the male, and there is an extreme attack against the man, always have been. And we're seeing that more now than ever before. Uh, the Me Too, the Me movement, and this is not against the women who have been abused. We are against any form of, of abuse. But you have to be very careful of the sorcery that hides behind movements. Okay? There's a sorcery that hides behind 
behind movement. The devil is using any movement to hide behind. Whether it's black America, whether it's black agenda, whether it's the Me Too movement, whether it's church, whether it's conventions, whether it's a revival. It don't matter what the organization may be. The enemy is looking to be in control. The prince of the air wants to be God. He wants to control everything on the earth and he wants to make you think that it's okay for you to be God in the sense of having your own decisions and not dependent upon God. And so he hides behind any movement. And so if you show me black agenda, you show me any uh, your my rights, your rights, all these rights, you'll see sorcery has his hands in it somewhere. Okay, and so one of the things that he's doing right now is he after the man. This is why churches are full of women because there's no agenda to how to draw the man into position so that the family can be strong. And you must understand that the purpose of the church is to build strong families. Strong families build strong communities. Strong communities build strong cities, and a strong city will make a strong country. But where there is a weak family, you have a weak community, and where there is a weak community, there is a weak city, and where there there's a weak city, there's a weak country or nation, okay? And so this is very key. And so he fights against the male children. And so this is why sorcery is all over the man. It's hard to find a real man to raise up another man in the house. Most homes are suffering from the spirit of sorcery, the prince of the air. Most homes are suffering because there's no man in the house. There's no man to lead. There's no man to set foundation. And so we raise it up a generation without any any the male man in the house. We raise up a generation when you go to the school systems that the women are dominating the even the educational department and you find out that there is no men and most of the time we find men that uh, two thirds of our men are locked up. Uh, another third of our men are strung out on crack cocaine. This is an assassin attack by the spirit of sorcery to destroy our men. And so what happens is the men carry the seed and so the generation is supposed to make a difference, to turn the world upside down. Watch this. Doesn't have anyone to raise him or raise her. Even the power of a woman. A woman is the most powerful uh, person God has ever created in a, in a sense of positioning because she is the helpmate to the next level. You as a man can't even be all that you need to be until you connect it to your wife because he spoke unto them. The assignment is not unto you as a man only or to you as a woman, but the assignment was unto them. He said to them be fruitful. So without then you have no fruitfulness. You have no real power of dominion. And so the enemy has always been after that. He's always used the woman to bring the man down. Watch this. And so this is very key. And so sorcery is after that. And so when we look at sorcery from the womb to the tomb. When we got to look at sorcery from the womb to the tomb, we got to look at it as, that is designed to make sure that the man, so a man is raised in a house without a father giving him his name, without a father giving him foundation. When you come to the church, you can't find a man in church. And then when you do find a man or a male man who may be praising God, he's struggling with the feminine uh, qualities. Most of us uh, men, they even preach from the soulish realm. You should preach from the spirit that the woman keeps silent. That's not dealing with the female that's dealing with the psyche. Do not preach from your soul. You preach from the spirit man, which is your husband. When you get home, ask your husband. And so even men doesn't have a message for men. And so we preach message, messages that deal with the emotional side. And so women, they love messages and nothing against them. And even this has shifted. But back in my day, women loved the, loved the emotional type of a message. But a man needs direction. He needs order. He needs clarity. And so a lot of times, even in the church, most of the time, even in the church, there's sorcery going on that, 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 uh, castrates the man. He can't find a position. He can't find a man that puts him in order, puts him in check and demand power on his seed. Okay. Very key. This is sorcery at its best. So point number one, he fights the next generation. So now we have a generation that's been raised by a generation that, that don't know God. When you look at Pharaoh and you look at the spirit of sorcery in Pharaoh, uh, look at Exodus chapter 1. And it says that when Joseph died, Joseph was a man of God. Okay, watch this. When Joseph died, it says that it ro rose up Pharaoh, but knew not the God of Joseph.
And we have sorcery in the church now because there's people in leadership, watch this, that did not know the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We, there are men that, does not, that never had a prayer life, never went on a three-day fast, never studied the Bible, never birthed anything out of their spirit, never took on the fullness of God and the fullness of their potential. And so what happens is there's a generation that, that is born under the spell of sorcery. When the time that it comes out of the world, Womb, sorcery already make it feel like there's no one to guide you. There's no one to love you. There's no one to protect you. There's no one to raise you. There's no one to help you find your identity. And so this is a part of sorcery to constantly let women have babies, but don't have a man in the house to raise the son or help raise the daughter. Okay. And so he fights against the next generation. I want to name to you the, the millennium generation is suffering under a sorcery spirit. So this is why the millennium people, most of them don't want to have anything to do with church, anything to do with God, anything to do with prayer. And it, sometimes it becomes very devastating to you that how is my child who I raised up in my home don't love God the way I love God. The very things that I taught my children, they did not take that baton and run with it. You were a prayer warrior, but your children don't want to have anything to do with prayer. They go to church if they feel like going to church, and most times they don't. And so what happens is because that sorcery spirit, watch this, sits over the earth, the prince of the power of the air, and he's automatically having people, this is what the Bible says, Paul says, you walk according to the course of this world, the children of disobedience by the prince of the power of the air. Brother Brian put that scripture up, okay? And so I want you to see these scriptures, how sorcery has been working from one generation to a next generation, from one generation to another generation. Even in, in Hosea chapter 4, he says, because there's no truth in the land, there's no love in the land, there's no mercy in the land. He said, you can be no priest for me. He said, neither, I said, I will reject you and I will reject your children. This is a part of sorcery that is constantly moving from one generation to another generation. So now you have children that are coming out of the womb, not, not, not sure <clears throat> of their sexuality. I think I'm a man when I'm a woman. I think I'm a woman when I'm a man. Why? Because sorcery is already confusing their identity. I told you one of the signs of sorcery is when your identity is confused. You don't know who you should be. You don't know what you should be. You don't know what you're called to be. You're confused about your relationship with God. This is, watch this, the spirit of sorcery. It's so working. So the millennium is struggling fighting the spirit of sorcery. And because we don't have a lot of uh, uh, apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers in place, most of the people who know the truth have been so wounded and they become a victim of their own woo that they're not in place to teach this. So now the people who are crying out, how do I break sorcery over my life? I was born under a spirit of sorcery. Uh, when you're born under confusion, when you're born under, you feel like you don't have purpose. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. This is something that I came out of the womb. I came out of the womb craving for something. And it took me years to break this mindset over my life that I was unloved. Love and I was un I was not understood. This is the spirit of sorcery. And so the, the millennium is struggling with the spirit of sorcery because where are the teachers that break this off of you? Where are the teachers that tell you how to be who God called you to be? So you so you grow up having an attraction for tattoos. You grow up having an attraction for the same sex. You grow up having an attraction for the world. You grow up. And so sorcery is in our music. Sorcery is in the clothes. Sorcery is in the fashion. Sorcery is in the store. Sorcery is in the educational system. Sorcery is in our food. Sorcery is in, in the medication. Sorcery is all over. So there's a generation that's being destroyed that taught to be a slave to the system. Just like the children of Israel were raised up in Pharaoh's house. and had, In 400 years they prayed to be out of this. But the minute they get free, they can't even believe who they are because sorcery will rob you out of the identity. And you will always see yourself you will always see yourself as grasshoppers in their eyes because sorcery blinds you to your power. It blinds you to your potential. It blinds you to your ability. This is the spirit of sorcery 
And it fights against this generation. The millennium generation, the generation of X, the generation of Y, it fights against them. This is the reason why it does it. It does it because God is constantly releasing a generation. I want to help you with something. Constantly releasing a generation that's supposed to be builders on the earth. And so this is why. You got to hear this now. You may be a young lady who had a baby out of wedlock. And because of the situation, sorcery wants to tell you that your baby is cursed. Because we had sex and I shouldn't have been having sex. And I had children. I got raped and I had a baby. No, sorcery wants to identify your child. But children are the inheritance of the Lord. Do not let the devil take that seed mentally by making you feel because you had sex out of out of order by disobedience. God brings children here and God released a generation out of your womb, even in a messed up situation to change the generation, to change the mindset of the world, to begin to bring people into. So a lot of us were born. It seemed to be out of mishaps, but it was time for us to introduce something to the generation. It'll do something to the earth. And so God is raising up powerful prophets and, and, and apostles and investors and pastors and teachers. But most of the time, the mother don't know who that baby is. The baby, the mother don't know because sorcery already is telling the, telling the mother, the baby is cursed. The baby is not going to make it. And you got to say, that's not true. The millennium, the millennium generation was supposed to shift this earth. They have the scientific knowledge to change it. They have the biological understanding to do it. They have the artistic ability to do it. They have the mathematical understanding. They have the music genius to do it. But sorcery is trying to get a hold to our next generation. It wants to get a hold to the millennium that the right souls will never be released. That the right understanding of how to advance will never be released. This is Pharaoh. He wants to, he wants to recruit your baby to work for him. He know you can build. If you study children of Israel, they built kingdoms. They built pyramids. They built strong buildings. Building is in you, but the devil wants you to build on his side. He never wants you to build on God's side. He wants you to build things that benefit you. He wants you to understand how to do uh, finances and economy, but never do it for the kingdom. And so now you're making the world rich when you're supposed to make the kingdom rich. Now you are advancing the world with your technology, you are investing the world with your ideas of culture, fashion, artistic ability, but you're supposed all those things are supposed to be a part of the kingdom, but because of sorcery, and so we got to begin to say that my child will not be led by sorcery my child is part of the millennium age, my son is part of the generational X, the generational Y, and they are coming with an independency, that was for so the religion could not get a hold to them. So the religion could not get a hold to them. And so the very thing the devil wants to use for evil, God will use for good. You already are disconnected. You already see where you don't have to have this to do what you're called to do. But you got to point it towards God. And so the enemy is trying to grab a generation that will not let you control them, but he's controlling them through their passion. He's controlling them through their loss of identity. But when we take that mindset back and say, I understand the belief. Them. They're not going to sit in church all day like I did. They're not going to let somebody control them like I did. But if they don't get with God, they'll still be controlled, but without a church. They'll still be under control, but without a building. They'll still be controlled, but without a religion. I got to let them know that the way you think is right, but who you are concentrating on, where you're focused on, is wrong, okay? And so he fights this generation by making sure that the millennium never gets Get in touch with our God. Never know the God of Joseph. He's messing with the millennial mindset to say, do not be involved with people who pray all day, but they can't pay their bills. And so he's he's sending out signals. This is why he's trying to mark their body with tattoos at a young age. This is not just something, and we as the Christians, we don't know how to love those who've already did that, but he's trying to mark them early. He's trying to mark them through video games. Sorcery is in everything. It's in the video games. It's in the clothes. It's in the TV, it's in the media, it's in cable, it's in hip-hop, it's in music, it's in gospel, it's in all of it. And so we got to see 
that the sorcery is after the millennium. Why? Because there are constantly, there are Moses being birthed. And even though he may have been raised up in Pharaoh's house, he's a leader for God's people. There's a Joshua that's in this system. But we got to get Joshua out. There's a Saul that must be turned into a Paul. There's a Simon that must be turned into a Peter. There, there's an Abram that must be turned into an Abraham. There's a Sarah that must be turned into a Sarah. And we got to see it. But sorcery wants to rob them of their, watch this, of their rights to deliver to us what was in them for this generation. Okay? So he fights against that. He fights against the builders of the earth. The yes. builders of the earth. Mm -hmm. and, and your son is a builder. Your, your daughter is a builder. He's the builders of the earth. But he wants them to build kingdoms for themselves, which ultimately is for him. Because the way you worship the devil is when you worship yourself. And so he wants you to be deceived on who you should build. Yes. Okay? Ah, that's point number one. Point number two. The sorcery mindset is after the male builders, especially which are the thinkers. He's after the thinkers. This is why thinkers have a problem with religion. Real thinkers have a problem with everything because we read the Bible, but we couldn't answer the Bible. And so thinkers would say, well, why do you believe in the Bible? And what the devil is doing, sorcery, is having the thinkers question the very God they should serve. And because we didn't have answers for the thinkers, this is why most of the time sorcery works when you are afraid of thinkers. Thinkers are the key to break sorcery, but sorcery is working on the thinkers to use your thinking ability against people who have not spent time in God. And when the way you think is going to cause a conflict for the church. The problem is the church is struggling with thinkers and sorcery is waiting. He will use a thinker, a person that will say, why do you believe in God? Good to see you, Pastor Jeff. Make sure you call me because I got to ask you about uh, that car. Okay. And so it's very key. That when you deal with sorcery in the church, he's dealing with people. Watch this. The devil works on both sides. Most of the time he works in the church that we don't know how to embrace thinkers. People that are thinkers, we call them troublemakers. We call them insubordinate. We say, you know what? They're causing problems. They just don't want to follow because they're thinkers. But God designed for you to be thinkers. We should not be afraid of intellectual people. The problem with intellect is when it's not led by the spirit. But everything that God does to you and through you, he does it through your mind. So I cannot be afraid to think. I cannot run corporations in the world and get in church and can't even teach Sunday school. This can't be. But this is sorcery at its best to make you feel bad about thinking, to make you feel like you don't have a place because you're a thinker, because you don't do everything everybody say. And so what happens is sorcery wants to control you, but he's using your thinking ability to keep you away from the very thing you should be doing. And so he it's, it's like a, a, a two-edged sword. And so when thinkers come into the house of God, well, we need thinkers in the house of God. We need people that can think outside of the four walls. We need people that God use them in their mindset to know that church has to affect the community. It cannot just be about Sunday mornings. How well are you affecting the community? But we have thinkers that are thinking a better way to do church, a more effective way to do evangelism, a more effective way to do Bible study, a more effective way to do Sunday mornings, but sorcery has caused us to even be, be uh, uh, intimidated over thinkers. This is assassination of the male children. And so the spirit of sorcery, Pharaoh, he says, kill the male babies. Remember, there are midwives and God is using midwives in, when the devil is using midwives in the church to kill thinkers. And so now you were at the church to make sure the baby be delivered. But now every time the baby steps up, every time there's a cry from this new mindset, every time there's a yearning to see something greater from this new mindset, he said, instead of you being a midwife and birthing it and help deliver it, you murder it by saying, we don't do that here. You don't question authority here. You don't say that here. And we have become murderers instead of midwives because sorcery is teaching us how to destroy the new things.
thinkers in the earth. The church could have advanced much more, but we are killing the people that are supposed to move us into a greater level of worship. There are people saying, why do we keep doing worship the same way? Or why are we singing the same way? Why don't we do this and why don't we do that? But what happens is we are becoming the, the midwives of Pharaoh and we're destroying the male children. And so men have a problem. They can't find a place in the church because every time I have an idea, every time I have a suggestion, every time I bring something forth, every time I question what I see that seem to be out of order, I'm not getting help. I'm not getting empowered. I'm being murdered. The very people that I'm coming to is talking about me when I leave the church. They're using my past against me. They're murdering me with their mouths. This is the murdering spirit that sorcery does to midwives. Sorcery looks for people who are midwives because you are the closest to the next idea. You are the closest to the next philosophy. You are the closest to the next move of faith. And so you are there when it's first coming out. I use you to kill it before it gets a chance to develop its way of thinking. I use you to kill it before it really knows who it is. And so the enemy is saying every male, every builder, every thinker in the kingdom of God, I want you to tell them they're not allowed because they haven't been baptized in Jesus' name. They haven't been baptized in the Father, Son, and God. Tell them they, they can't do it because we don't do that over here. We don't say that over here. We don't have that way over here. And what happens, we have become killers of the thinkers. We've become killers. So now the church is not progressing, but the world will embrace the thinkers. And before you know it, they got an iPhone 8, an iPhone 9, an iPhone 10, and we still doing church the same way. Uh-oh, before you know it, they got cars that drive themselves, but the church is still doing it the same way. Oh, they got all kind of technology, but the church is doing it the same way. How did the world grow? It took sorcery to convince the people, the midwives, that you are to destroy the male children so that a leader, there is somebody who was supposed to come out of the house of God. There was a man, a woman that was supposed to come out of the house of God that shifts us into another level of prayer, that shifts us into another level of worship, that shifts us. But the enemy has convinced the midwives to destroy the babies. And when you're supposed to be a deliverer, you have become a murderer in church. You write in church murdering people's passion, murdering their purpose, murdering their identity. Oh, this is a sign of sorcery that when I get hurt, I get hurt right in the house of God. I got hurt right in choir rehearsal. I got broken right in Bible study. How did the person that was supposed to make sure that I come into a safe environment destroy me because sorcery is waiting for the thinkers when they are at an infant stage to destroy you before you get a chance to know who you are, before you get a chance to be who you are, you already got hurt. You already been destroyed. You're 12 years old and you don't believe in God. You're 13 years old. You just came to church and you already see everything wrong. This is the spirit of sorcery that changes the position, the identity of a midwife and turn midwives into murderers. Woo, God. Point number two, the sorcery mindset is after the male builders. That's why I had a problem. I didn't agree with everything that Kanye West was doing. But I know that we need powerful men of God that have creative ability. And there are male children that got a song we need to hear. There are male children that got ideas. And every time God tries to birth somebody into the kingdom that come out of the world, we find a way to kill them like the midwives did in Egypt. But instead of making sure that Kanye West come into a safe environment, that we love him, that we develop him, we became the murderer midwives and tried to kill him. Even he just got saved. He just now made a confession. Oh, can we not see this is sorcery that tells you anybody that don't look like you, kill him. Anybody who don't shout like you, kill him. Anybody who don't sing like you, kill him. If they don't praise like you, kill him. If they don't dress like you, kill him. This is... Uh, this is the spirit of sorcery, but but 
There's a generation that's coming out of the womb. There's a Moses that's on his way. There's a Joshua that's on his way. But we got to break the sorcery from, from Pharaoh off the midwives that you don't kill somebody that was supposed to launch us into another area in God. That's supposed to transport us, but you sitting there waiting for the next generation to come out so you can murder it with your opinion, murder it with your doctrines. This is the sign of sorcery at its best. Yes, it is. If you're just coming on, hit that share button. Which song will we go? Thank you. Point number three. The sorcery mindset have a problem with fighters who rise up to fight the system. God is raising up a generation that come out of the womb with courage. They come out of the womb with focus. And sorcery wants to kill you in your infant stage because you are born as a fighter. Even before you got saved, you didn't take no mess. There's a reason why you didn't take no mess in the world because there's a spirit in you. Woo! That's right, Sister Kia, Sister uh, Crockett, have kill him and have used him. That's right, that's death too. Watch this. And so what happens is you have a fighter in you. You didn't take no stuff in the school. Why do you think your mother w was so mean? No, your mother didn't know what to do with that energy, but God wanted you to be raised under something stern because they're warriors, they're fighters. And sorcery looks for babies. Watch this. That, that release the frequency as a fighter from the time they were born. Every person carries a frequency. You carry a vibration. The enemy knew that there's a vibration coming. There's a warrior that's about to be birthed. I can feel it in the atmosphere. The enemy, watch this. He watches the, the frequencies of the atmosphere and he understands with certain frequencies rises up. You are a warrior from birth. You don't take no stuff from birth. You've been born to come against systems. You've been born to come against depression. You've been born. And so sorcery tried to mess you up in the womb. This is why many of you have messed up marriages. You don't have a messed up marriage because she just want to be stubborn. Sorcery will jump in your wife to kill the fight out of you. Sorcery will, will visit you and make you feel like you're not, you're, you're not a man so that the warrior in you would give up. This is why homosexuality is rising. It's not just rising because people want to have sex with the same sex. It is to take the warrior out of you, the fight out of you. You're not fighting for the right thing. You're not fighting for the identity God gave you. You're fighting for your right to choose your own identity. Oh, this is when a warrior is fighting the fight from within. And, and guess what? He'll never fend or win the fight from without. You got to know that you are a warrior. The sorcery looks for people that will say no to the system. And those that will say no to the system, he'll try to mess you up in sexuality. He'll try to mess you up with money. If you have a money problem, nine times out of ten, and you know how to do this, nine times out of ten, it is the enemy using sorcery so that you will not fight against the system. Oh, he don't, he hates fighter. You can walk into a church, and if sorcery runs that church, they know you will fight the system. How we know? Because you don't raise your hand every time we tell you. We can't tell you to stand up 12 times and you do it. We can't tell you to clap your hands and give God praise if you're not led. And they identify there's a fighter. Look at them. We can't manipulate them through praise. We can't manipulate them through words. I even used some enticing words. I told them that God going to bless them and give a million dollars. And they looking at me like, I'm going to wait and see. They, they, they're judging every, every prophecy. Yeah, they're reading it. The devil hates fighters. And if you've been born to be a fighter against the system, sorcery comes after you. Sorcery will attack your mother because you are a fighter against system. They try to make you feel like you don't have no support. Why do you think the greatest fighters always struggle with who is my daddy and who is my mother? This is a setup, a strategy from sorcery to make you feel like you don't have support. To hold you back from your attempt to take the land. Yeah, the enemy is trying to take the dog out of you. He want to take the warrior out of you. He want to take the fight out of you. He want to take the bite out of the dog because he know you've been born to fight. So sorcery looks for it. So this is why people who deal with, who have a fighting spirit 
in them to go against the system that is against God, the Antichrist, the Antichrist movement. These people, most of the time, have messed up marriages. They have sexual problems. They have money problems. They have support problems. This is not a coincidence. This is a setup of sorcery that says, I can't wait till you get grown. I got to mess you up in the womb. I got to mess you up as a baby. I got to mess your family up when you're five, when you're seven. I got to have you experience divorce. Why? Because if you ever get grown, you go to see something that's out of order and there's something in you that's not afraid to lose it. You're not afraid to walk away. You're not afraid to stand up against it. So the sorcery looks for it. If you've been having bad relationship problem, it's because sorcery know you are too much of a fighter. Matter of fact, sorcery tries to make you always spend your time on your own personal problems. You can't fight the system because you're always trying to get your marriage together. Always trying to get your kids together. Always trying to get your money together. Always trying to get this together. So you really can't fight the causes that you've been assigned to because sorcery keeps you busy. It keeps you busy so that you won't get mad enough. Guess, guess what? And you will get worn down, weary and well doing. Uh-oh. Because if you ever take your position, you've been born. So Pharaoh says, kill the male children. Because if we ever rise up in war and they join in with my enemies, they will conquer. Pharaoh knows, sorcery knows, that if you ever join up with a, the right ministry, a real father, a real brother, if you ever get a real helpmate, if you ever get in a real solid marriage, he knows the battle that you will put against your tear down traditions, your tear down strongholds, your tear down emotions. So he got to keep you broken, distracted. He got to keep you a weary, keep you on a job. Whatever he has to do to make sure you don't have enough time. You don't have enough rest. You don't have enough this. You don't have enough that because you are born to fight against the system. You can't stand it but so long. Can you grab me a towel while y'all? Uh, you, you can't stand it but so long. You can't stand it but so long. See? Sorcery has a problem with fighters who rise up. And this is why the enemy tried to make you look like you were dumb because you kept rising up. You kept raising your hand in Bible study. You kept calling the pastor and saying, I need to talk to you about something. Uh-oh, there's a fighter. Let's get him up. Let's bring up their past. You got to go. Excuse me, y'all. You got to get, you got to go. You hear me? This is, this is the enemy. He masters in distractions. So that warriors, and you crying, why I can't never find a church? Because every church you find to sorcery sees you. They know eventually you're going to have some questions. You're going to have some statements. You're going to see the devil and they got to keep you out. Yes. It, it, it has a problem with fighters. Okay. Point number four, sorcer the sorcerer mindset is after people who come to the house of God. Now, you got to hear this. Ah, thank you, Holy Ghost. We bless your name. You're sowing where you're going. Sorcery, the sorcery mindset has a problem with people who come to the house. There's another set of people that come to a house. And when they come to the house, they only have one expectation. That's to build God's people. Anytime sorcery know that you are so focused. That you only come to church to see God. You're not going to get me because I'm not coming. This is not a style show. I'm not coming so you can see this brand new suit that I, that I paid $400 for. And I made sure I get a, a tailor-made suit. I made sure I get a name so that you can recognize this suit because I want you to give me glory. But there are people that come to church and I come for one reason. I come to build God's people. I didn't come to be entertained. I didn't come to entertain. You can't use me because I can sing. Because I'm coming to build God's people. I'm not going to be a part of a church because you need an entertainment. You need a star. And so you hired me as your star. Star. I'm not your star. I'm here to build God's people. When that happened, the enemy sorcery looks you out. I'm telling you, listen to me. Listen to me. He looks for you. And this is when sorcery will send a woman to the church. And all of a sudden, and you've been married for years. All of a sudden, this woman is attracted to you. Look like she's attracted to your anointing. She's not attracted to your anointing. You have been spot out by sorcery. And sorcery know that you know the truth. You 
You know the real reason for church. You know that people should be growing. You know that people should be developing. You know that people should be equipped. You know that people should be released. And so all of a sudden, you have never had this level of temptation. Here come this woman in the red dress. She coming. She loves the way you smell, the way you preach, the way you teach. Why all of a sudden? Because the enemy saw, sorcery saw, that you understand the reason for church. We can't have you in this church without some dirt on you. We got to mess your life up. Because if you stay here, you're going to make a demand for people to grow. You're not going to let us use the people for entertainment. You're not going to let us use the drummer and the piano player for entertainment. You're not going to let us use the praise and worship leader just to build our church, but she'll never get free to build her own. You know that she has a church in her. You know he has a ministry in him. And because of that, that sorcery will send people to you. Send a man that smells so good, looks so good, carry his body Bible, know the scripture, but that man is going to take you away from prayer. That man is going to control you. That man is verbally going to abuse you, physically abuse you. Sorcery sends mindsets after people that know the truth. And so the real, pe the real people that the remnant that knows the truth, most time they caught up in some sexual sin. They caught up. And because we don't know that was the trick of sorcery, we join in with the devil and become accusers of the brethren and say, he just he should have lived right that was an assassin attack on him that was an assassin attack on her that wasn't just her weakness that was sorcery at its best why you think he sent somebody who was lukewarm he sent somebody who's speaking tongues he sent somebody that shouts he sent somebody that comes to the church he sent somebody that dances he sent somebody who would study the scriptures with you at first this was Jezebel that's right and Goliath at its best Jezebel make sure that Ahab's prayers be answered so that he would never go to God for his prayer. You got to study the story of Jezebel. I taught on it. Jezebel, Ahab wanted some land. He wanted some territory. Just, I mean, Ahab was the second largest real estate owner in the Bible. Study it. Out of all the people that owned land, Ahab was the second largest real estate person in the Bible. He wanted this land, and this one man wouldn't sell it to him. Jezebel had the man killed in the name of her husband, her love for her husband. But she killed his enemy so that, watch this, so that he would never see her as the enemy. Jezebel will help grow your church as long as you're not building people. The devil sends Jezebel to your church. She'll give. Listen, listen, you don't like this. Sorcery will send somebody that just give and give and give and give. They ain't giving just the giving. They're giving so that they can have your ear. They're giving so they can influence you. They're giving so they can have a position. Everybody just giving and giving for the right reason. Ooh, this is sorcery at its best. It uses money, power, prestige, position so that it can dominate the real purpose of the church. And so if you're a person that comes to church with no expectation, all you want to see is the people grow. All you want to see is the people release. All you want to see is the people mature. The spirit of sorcery is looking for you. To get you tied up in something. I've been in so much mess. But then I realized why. It took me years to realize why. Because I've got a real heart for people to grow. I really want people to know who they are in God. I want them to know what they're called to do. And so sorcery been trying to mess me up from the time I was born. You see the film of God in the place? Yes, you see the move of God? See, there it is again. It's moving. I, I seen it when I first came on today. I said something seemed to be wrong on my phone. The glory of God is in the house. Yes, oh, God, and we bless your name for it. We bless your name for it. Yes, we bless your name for it. Thank you, Jesus. The sorcery mindset is coming after people. If you are a person that you want to see babies grow, you're tired of church as usual. You're tired of sitting in church year after year after year and see no growth. 
Most churches do not experience evangelistic growth. Most of them experience family growth. That church is only growing because that lady had a baby and they babies had a baby and they babies had a baby. And that's why the church is growing. It's family growth. It's not evangelistic growth. Most churches today are not growing because we are evangelizing the world. They only growing because you have one generation that has another generation, has another generation. And if that woman wouldn't have had so many kids, you wouldn't have so many members. Because that sorcery at its best. See that? Watch this. But when you have an expectation that all you want to see, and I'm trying to warn you, if you really want to see growth, you really want to see the word of God growing in your life, you really want to see people know the Bible and know it for themselves, then sorcery is looking for you. To blind you, to hurt you, to, to hinder you, to distract you, so that what you know will never come to pass. This is why you have the attacks on your life. Stop blaming your husband. Stop blaming your wife. Stop blaming your mother. Stop blaming your father. And understand that we don't fight against flesh and blood. But because of what I've been born to do, because of what I see, I am not a church hater. I am a sorcery hater. The problem is, is that I do not agree with sorcery. And when you don't agree with sorcery, people try to interpret as you hate church. As you're not with, you know, Apostle Jenkins don't believe people going to church. No, I don't believe in people being controlled through the house of God. I don't believe that the house of prayer should be turned into a den of thieves. And I believe that we should turn over the tables. I am not attacking people. I am attacking the tables. Jesus turned over the tables. That represents the system. We got systems set up in the house. Tables set up in the house. I said before you, a table. See, a table. And you shall, and you shall be anointed. What's at the table? The Lord's prayer. See, a table. But there are tables that are set up by the devil in the Lord's house. See? They're supposed to be at the table. He anointed me. He anointed my head with oil. You're supposed to eat. I eat in the presence of my enemies. The enemy is supposed to be there. The enemy is always going to be in the church. But they're not supposed to have their table there. The problem is when their table is in the church. Not them. When the devil was there on the woman for 18 years, God healed her. He understands that the enemy comes into the house. The problem is when we let the enemy set up tables, establish doctrines and teachings, establish mindsets, that's the problem. So yeah. Jesus turned over the tables. Thank you for giving. We are sowing where we're going. Thank you for that seed. And so it's very key. And when you have that level of expectation, the enemy targets you because you see the truth. All right? Point number five. The sorcery mind says, hate those individuals who are committed and where nothing can shake them. This is why I pray. I want you to pray for me and my wife. Constantly cover us. I have, it took me 55 years to get to this one mentality that I'm going to live right. I don't care at what cost. It took me 55 years. To get my mind is made up. I love my wife and she's my wife for life. But if anything happened, Robert Jenkins is going to live right with a wife, without a wife. I don't care how bad the home get. I have made up in my mind. This is my pursuit. Is to please the father at every expense. Because of that commitment. See, even some of you, when I said it, you start praying for me. Because fear automatically say, because of what you say, we're so afraid to be committed. Yes, mentally. Yes. Mentally. Mm -hmm. Mentally. we even afraid to say it. The sorcery works against your thought process. He knows it. The Bible says that he said to himself, I will ascend. He, the devil got kicked out over what he said to himself. And that's what he does to us. He deals with us with the thoughts in our mind. Cast out every thought and every imagination that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. You hear me? Very key. So he don't want you to even say in your mind, I love God in my mind. If you say, I love God, I love him with all my heart, with all my mind. All of a sudden, your mind will say, be careful what you say. Don't, don't say it. Don't say it. The devil fights you to speak some things that you know. And you'll never get there if you don't say you're there. You got you to gotta declare it. Yes, Lord. You got to declare it, see? But I know in my mind, this is where I'm at. But because of that, point number six, the sorcery mindset, hate those that are committed individuals that nothing can shake them. Nothing can shake me now. I know I'm loved. See that? Did you hear it? Even when I said, nothing can shake me now. Did you hear that? The devil said, oh, don't say nothing. Don't say nothing. We're afraid. You hear it? 
See? See, he's there, but this is there. He's there when I, when I want to do right. Evil is always present. He's going to be there. But I got to be led by the Spirit. Yes, I got to be committed mentally in order to see the manifestation. You see that? Very key. Now, because of that, my life is target. He hates people that are sold out for God. This is why when you said in your mind, I'm going to do what God said, all hell broke loose. Because sorcery looks for committed vibrations. Yes, sorcery looks for committed vibrations. You are hated. Why would you walk in the building? People begin to hate you. They don't even know you. They hate you because they saw the vibration. They felt it that this woman is committed. We can't fool her. We can't buy her. We can't manipulate her. We can't con her. She's committed. She's committed. Do you know right today when you get in the airplane and the and the pilot begins to drive off, you know the last word that the pilots are assigned to say before they pull off the runway? You know what they say? Committed. They make a commitment. When they say that word committed, the plane is now allowed to be released. Many times you're not flying because you haven't verbalized your commitment. But the attack of all the airways, everything, the prince of the air, he sends everything at you when you have made up in your mind, I am committed. Sorcery, and so, and, and I'm trying to help us mature. Listen, people of God, when you see people's lives under attack, quit agreeing with the devil. That is only because they made some, some type of vibration. They made some type of signal. They released some form of commitment because sorcery only comes after those that are a threat to the system. The sorcery says, sorcery sees from, watch this, from the soulless realm, from the prophetic side of the middle. Prophet James Summer talked about this yesterday, that false prophets and sorcery is only prophets that are not doing the will of God. And so what happens is, because they're not doing the will of God, they don't have access to the third heaven, but they do have access to the second heaven. And so they see things from the prince of the air. They see it from the middle ground. Watch this. And so what happens is, when you release a frequencies, the psyche see, they see that vibration and they come after you. This is why. But we got to quit joining in. We got to know that's not Jenkins. That if you see me do something wrong, you got to know that's not apostle. That's the attack that's trying to turn him because I know the level of his, of, uh, of his commitment. Not because of what I saw, but because of what I felt. You can feel where people's hearts are. This is why I don't let the devil mess me up when I see different people doing different things that I know they shouldn't be doing. Because I know who you are in God. That the only reason why you're going through this level of attack, only reason why you're going through this level of attack, because sorcery saw your commitment. The minute you decided to love your wife, women came out of the out of the war, war, uh, what they call it war, uh, woodwork. They came out of the woodwork. Why? Because you said I'm gonna love my wife. When I said this month is the month of February, let's love our wives, let's love our girlfriends. The enemy comes against any verbal commitment. If you say, I'm going to stick with a church, here come the enemy going to show you everything at that church for you not to stick. Because sorcery wants to distract you from your purpose. Sorcery don't want you in the right place. He don't want you connected to the right person. And so you go under attack because they hate any committed individual. Wherever you commit yourself to doing the will of God, don't think things are going to get better. Things are going to get worse because sorcery is attracted to the, the vibration of commitment to destroy it, to prove, the, to prove God wrong. I'm seeking who I may devour. I'm going from the earth, in and out the earth, looking for who I can distract. Yes, Lord. Woo! This is what sorcery does. And when you are committed to anything, you're committed to any purpose, you're committed to any, anything God has assigned you to, don't think things going to get better, they're going to get worse. Yes. Sorcery hates individuals who are focused, hate individuals who have an understanding, hate individuals who have a vision, and you will be attacked by it because of your own verbal and mental and spiritual commitment to it.
And if you can't be shaken, do you know how many things sorcery tried to do to you to get you to get out, to get you to give up, to get you to turn in the towel, to get you to quit? You don't see it. Every time you come against it, it tries to it bring up your past and try to find something wrong with you. Try to find something wrong with your marriage, something wrong with your daddy, something wrong with your mama, something wrong with your education. You're the wrong color. You're the wrong height. You don't have this. You don't have that. You don't do this. You don't do that. This is all sorcery because of who you are. Woo! That's point number, point number five. No, that's point number five. Committed to everyone who can sing. One, fights against a generation. Two, male builders. Three, those who fight the system. Four, those who come to the house with no expectation. Five, those who, who are committed with, have no, and can't be shaken by nothing. Or point number six. Point number six, sorcery mindset. Hate people who cannot be offended. And we're going to stop here. Or maybe one more. Who cannot be offended. When you have in your mind, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me, people of God. When you have in your mind, I'm not going to allow anything. He, she, the presence of God, I can see it on the film again. Watch this. Anytime you, anytime you say, I'm not going to let anything he do or she do offend me, I'm going to do what God say. I'm going to do it because God said it. I'm going to hold on to it. If I end up losing it all, man who loses life shall find it. Unless you hate brother, mother, sister, and father, you're not worthy of the kingdom. If you got to give all you have and sell it to the poor, I'm going to take up my cross and follow him. Listen, listen, listen. You hear me? The devil coming after you. And when you can't be offended, the worst people that sorcery hate, witches and warlocks and all kind of controlling Jezebel, they can't stand people who can't be offended. They can't listen. They, the devil hates you because the devil told you, let your mother come to your face. And your mother told you, I never wanted you. I wish I could have aborted you. And you say, mama, I love you. See, when we learn that love piece, this is why sorcery fights against any, any system that teaches love the right way. When you teach the power of love and how love suffers all things and endures all things, sorcery hates you because it can't offend you. It wants to say something to you that make you quit. It wants to say something to you that make you go another way. It wants to say something to you that you release another vibration. Why you think God got us loving our enemies? That ain't to make us look like fools. Bless those that despitefully use you. That's not to be dumb. That's to make sure that I never give you the vibration you give me. What it is is God said, I'm going to teach you how to stop the cycle. You stop the cycle by changing your response. And the enemy sorcery hates because I can't offend you. I had them embarrass you in the church and you didn't give up on ministry. I had them expose you and you still believe in having kids. I had them say, don't touch him. He's terrible. And you keep coming. He hates people. Sorcery hates those who knows how to always walk in love. Woo! See, can't be offended. Can't be offended. Even when you correct, even when you say, no, I'm not going to go, but I ain't mad at you. I can be strong. I can correct you. I can stand, but I'm not offended. I'm not offended. I have to tell you no. I'm not offended. I say I'm not going there. I'm not offended. See, I'm not offended. I can still love you. I can still spend time with you. I can stand with God and still walk with you and not lose God or lose my love for you. Uh-oh, because the enemy hoping that something penetrated what they gave you, what he gave you. See? Can't offend me. You can walk in as a drag queen. Can't offend me. Uh-oh. You come in in full hate mode. Can't offend me. Woo! You hear that? All right. Point number seven. The sorcery mindset comes to you in the infant stages. Pharaoh, I'm taking all this from Exodus chapter seven, verses one through 13. Pharaoh assigned the midwives, which was supposed to deliver babies, to become murderers. And the enemy is looking for people in the house that's supposed to help you, but they kill you. And what he did was he said, kill them when they come out of the womb. The spirit of sorcery don't wait for you to get mature. It doesn't wait for you to get educated. Yes, it comes for you at an infant stage. 
if you have experienced any form of sorcery in all the different aspects of it, of influence, of control, manipulation, I guarantee you it started in the womb. Pharaoh released a mindset to the people that was supposed to bring birth. Supposed to bring birth. Midwives were supposed to help delivery. Most of the time, sorcery uses people that should have developed you to hurt, to hurt you. Should have worked with you in being delivered. Should have created a safe place for you to be born. Most of the time, the sorcery changes midwives into murderers. Watch this. But he, but he said at a young age, why don't you just decree to kill them once they get here? No, kill them in their infant stage. This is why the greatest of your church pain hurt started in your home. It started in the home. It started in the first time you joined that church. It started the first time you got, you, you got hired on that job. It starts in your infant stage. When you are immature, when you're vulnerable, it wants to get to you before you learn how to think. This is why indoctrination starts, watch this, in Sunday school. Most churches' Sunday school department is terrible. Most churches' Sunday school department is terrible. 2020 Sunday schools departments are terrible. Because the enemy has already assassinated that particular ministry. Most children's churches are terrible, especially in the black church. Because they want to destroy you. Before you learn how to think. Because I need to indoctrinate you before you can tell me I'm wrong. I need to already tell you what is sin so you can't tell me what's not sin. I need to already tell you who God is so you can't have a revelation of your own. So you'll lean on me to reveal God. Because I have to catch you in your infant state. And not just kill you, murder, but I can kill you by putting you on the wrong direction. Giving you the wrong medicine destroys you. To get you believing something that is not designed for your purpose is death. The sorcery mindset comes to the infant states. He wants to destroy them before they start thinking for themselves. Before you attain any sonship, the sorcery comes after you so that you will never grow into maturity. You'll always depend upon someone else to educate you. That's right. When you start having a hunger for God, here comes sorcery. In any way, in any way, through school, through a best friend, through a mother, through a father, through a system. God bless you, Brother Reno, man. Love you so much. This is point number seven. All right. Point number eight. The spirit of sorcery wants to bring confusion to the infant stage because a child is defend defendless. He can't defend himself. When you are immature, you couldn't say that wasn't right. You couldn't say that's not biblical. You couldn't say, you know what? You don't know the hermeneutics of the Bible. You don't know the exegete of the scriptures. You couldn't say that. You couldn't say anything. You couldn't say that's not the Greek meaning for that because you were defenseless. This is the real reason why. Why does God leave the 99 and go after the one? Because he's not going to leave a sheep that is defenseless for himself. He cannot fight against a wolf. He's a sheep. We're supposed to leave the 99 in the hands of other shepherds and go after the one. We can't go after the one because we don't trust no one else with the sheep. And so we have a one-man system. A one-man system. So if you got a one-man system, then anybody get lost, you are on your own. And when you're left defenseless. And so God has a problem. Woe unto the shepherds that have scattered my sheep. See? This is a system of sorcery that scatters the sheep and you don't even have a heart for those that left. You mean you're not concerned about the person that left the church? You know they don't know about spiritual warfare. You know they can't intercede for themselves. You know they're not strong enough. You know they can't deal with demonic activity. You know they're not healthy to make choices. Why did it bother you when they left the church? Why didn't you call them? This is sorcery. And you told the people not to call them. That's sorcery. 
You told them not to connect to them. How dare you leave a sheep by themselves? It's okay for them to be a sheep in your house, but they can't be a sheep, watch this, on their own. And the thing about that is, you want them to never be on their own, so you convince them to be a sheep is the right thing to do. But if you raise them as sons, they could handle going into the world because they're mature enough to deal with devils by themselves. They got their own prayer life. So you never gave them what they need in the house to become a son. And then when they leave the house because they're not getting fed, sheep leave because they're going after grass. What makes a sheep wonder? A sheep doesn't wonder because he don't want to be with the shepherd. A sheep only drifts away because he looks down when he eats. He eats down. And when he goes after green pasture, and as long as they're grass, he walks where he's getting fed. And now you want to beat the people up because they got some grass somewhere else outside of your building. They got some grass somewhere outside of your denomination. So now you want to ostracize them because they was going after their appetite. And now you want to kill them and not even come after them because their own hunger and thirst made them look for more outside of your building. Made them look for more. And now you're going to leave them to themselves. This is the spirit of sorcery at its best. Because they're defenseless now. Even though they can eat, they can't fight. I don't care how much an appetite a sheep have. They don't have the fighting capacity to fight off a wolf. They don't have the fighting capacity. And so you can't beat them up because they're hungry, but they can't fight. They shouldn't have spiritual. You don't give knives to sheep. You don't teach spiritual warfare to sheep. You raise them up to be sons, and then you put a sword in their hand. You raise them up to be mature, and then you put meat in their mouth. You don't feed a baby steak. You feed them milk. Yes, God. See? Yeah. This is sorcery. That keeps you stuck on being a sheep. Never wanted you to grow. Never wanted you to mature. Won't teach you the mysteries. Won't teach you. Tell you tell you the mysteries over the pulpit, but won't tell you how they got them. How did you get that revelation, Pastor? Why won't you tell me how you got what you got? How do, why won't you share with me? Because I want you to always depend upon me to be the deep one. I don't want you to know that God is the one. I don't want you to know where the bakery is. I'm going to go to the bakery. I'm going to get the bread. And then I'm going to charge you for the bread. I'm going to charge you for the bread I got free from God. I went to the bakery. God gave me freely. You have received freely. Freely you give. No, I'm not going to give freely. I'm going to charge you for the bread I got from God for free. And if you don't pay for this bread, then you are insubordinate. You're not a faithful member. You don't want to listen. You don't want to be in a leadership. You're not submissive. All these things is because I want to charge you for bread I got for free. But freely I give because freely I have received. And when you don't see this, it's sorcery at its best. It's catching you when you don't know, when you can't fight, when you are infant. Woo! All right. Point number nine, sorcery. The sorcery mindset hates giant killers. Woo! Yataro. He hates giant killers. When you have been raised up by the spirit of God, and now you're not afraid to come in that house and deal with them giants in that house. I'm not going to act like I don't see these witches up in this pulpit. I see a witch over there. There's a warlock over there. Pastor, you've been manipulated by that. And I'm a giant killer. I'm not afraid. You can't offend me. I'm committed. I'm loyal. God sent me here. And these witches going to leave before I leave. I'm going to fight on your behalf. I'm not going to let the devil rob you. That's a great man of God. But he's young. He don't know. But I see the, the sorcery that's trying to control him. And when you have become a giant killer, sorcery hates you. You are hated because every place you go, you kill, you kill. Uh oh, and last time you came, you killed folk giants called depression, and you kill them. You said, Not here, you're not gonna be depressed. You start prophesying over your children, you start declaring, you start taking territory, and the devil hates you because you are a giant killer. Whenever you are not a baby killer, you will watch this. You have survived and become a giant killer. The devil wanted you to be a killer, but he wanted you to kill 
babies, not giants. He wanted you to kill the babies coming out the womb. He wanted you to kill ministries coming out the womb. He wanted you to make that man feel like he ain't got no call in life. He just want to start a church. You wanted to sabotage the ministry. Even before it got started, you ain't got enough money to start no church. Won't nobody follow you. You wanted to sabotage it. But God raised that same baby up to be a giant killer. Now they come back 10 years later and they're not, they not afraid of you. They're not intimidated. Oh, we hate people who ain't intimidated. I don't need no title. I don't need no position. I've been anointed by God to be a giant killer. When I talk, swords come out my mouth. When I open up my mouth, a two-edged sword is released and I kill the atmosphere of depression, suicidal, doubt, fear, and all of a sudden you are hated because you are a giant killer. My name is Caleb. It means dog. My name is Joshua. It means warrior. We ain't afraid of no giants. Where are they? Oh, what do you do when sorcery wants you to think different about the giant killers? They don't want you to like them. They don't want you to support them. They don't want you to give to them. They don't want you to be behind them because they're giant killers. You're hated yes, when you've been raised to be a giant killer. Giant killers, let me show you the strongest, the strongest expression from God from giant killers. Giant killers always desire the people that sit with them and under them to have a greater anointing. You know you are under a giant killer when that pastor wants you to be greater than him. Even Jesus said, greater work shall you do. Giant killers raise up generations of giant killers. They raise up people to have a greater anointing than themselves. You want your brother to be stronger than you, wiser than you. You want him to know because every generation gets wickeder, so every generation must get wiser. You raise them up to know more about God. They have a greater level for passion, a greater level for purpose, a greater level for, for identity. And when you're a giant killer, you want your successor to even go greater. That's when you're under a giant killer. By how they see the success of their brothers and sisters. I don't want it. Why you think me and Prophet James started in my father's house together? I ain't taught what one time, probably in the last year, or in my father's house. Because Prophet James Summers has to go farther. He has to go greater. Why do you think I support Sister Nick Journey, Sister Tia Crockett and her husband, all these ministries? Because they got to go greater. They got to go greater. If God gave me something to give to you, you I must raise you to be a giant killer. Why? Because I'm a giant killer. So how can I be a giant killer, but I don't want you to have a naughty for a greater giant to come? Why do you think that, that David had five smooth stones? Why did he have five? He was only killed one Goliath because Goliath had four other brothers. His anointing says, I prepare you, the next generation, the keys of David prepares you to deal with the giants that have not come to battle, but they're already born. This is this is revelatory. David says for the, for the whole generation, I'll kill you, Goliath, but if your brothers show up, I got a stone for him. We are the stones of God. We are the stones, the stones that the builders rejected. We are that we are that next person. You are that person. You are that person. You are that person. And so David, the David anointing raises up people to become so that you can fight a giant. So I taught you how to go against the system of Jezebel. I taught you how to go against the system of flesh so that sin won't make you fall. Lust won't make you fall. Money won't make you fall. Pride won't make you fall. Ego won't make you fall because a giant killer raises giant killer. Woo! Four other brothers. Why do you think I'm about to raise up a, 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 a prayer team? Because giant killers and teach you every secret of the kingdom that God revealed to me so that those that are under can have a greater anointing. Woo! Yes, God. Yes, God. See? The sorcery hate people. Why? The real reason why the devil hates you because he know when people talk to you, they leave better. They leave wiser. He don't want nobody to believe in what you say, Sister Tia. He don't want nobody to trust what your husband has to say. He don't want people to believe in Brother Robert Bailey because he going to raise up giant killers. He don't want nobody to really believe in Prophet James Summers and his wife. He don't want nobody to believe in you because you will raise up giant killers. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Ooh. 
Point number 11, and I'll stop here. The sorcery mindsets, hate mindsets, that you are more concerned about the legacy of this level of truth. It kind of ties into the last one, that your brothers and sisters have a greater legacy. Who are you empowering to come against the system of sor sorcery? Don't draw everything to you. Learn to be a giver, a giver, a giver. Empower people, empower people, empower people. Father, I bless your day for this word. I thank you for your level of annuity. You want to pray? Okay. My wife is going to pray. Father, I thank you for her. Thank you for all that you're doing. We bless your name for it. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, Hallelujah. we bless you all today, God. Hallelujah. And Lord, we give you the glory. Father, we give you praise. And God, we enter your gates yeah, with yeah, thanksgiving yeah, yeah. and come before your courts with praise. And Father God, we enter into the blood of Jesus on today, God. And Father, we Hallelujah. bless you for this word on today, God. Mm. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for every and each and every one that's on the line on today, yeah, God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Father, we bless you, Lord, for Lord, the rhema that has come forth on today, God. Father, we uh. give you the glory for your name is worthy to be praised mm. on today, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we bless you, God. And Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for, Lord God, being able, Lord, to hear, Lord God, mm. what you are speaking in this season, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And Father, we lift up, Lord God, Apostle Jenkins on today, God. Father, I ask you to cover him, Lord God, like never before, Lord Jesus. Mm. Father, I just bless you for what you're doing on today, God. Mm. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, we ask, Lord God, Lord, <coughs> that you pour back, Lord, the virtue, Lord, that he has poured out, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, and we bless you right now. Hallelujah. But God, we come to serve the enemy. Notice on today, God, Lord, that you are above and beyond, Lord God, anything, Lord God, that he could ever, Lord God, attempt to do in this earth realm, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, and we bless you, God, as we tear down, Lord, every means of sorcery on today, God. Father, we come boldly, Lord God, speaking and declaring what thus saith the Lord, oh God. Father, we will not come, Lord God, with a spirit of intimidation, oh God, but Lord, we will come with our knees buckled on today, mm -hmm. God. And Lord, we will stand for righteousness and holiness on today, God. And Lord, we will not fear what, Lord, the enemy has attempted to do, oh God. But Lord, we come victorious, Lord <coughs> God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Hallelujah. God, declaring the works and the word of the Lord on today, God. Mm -hmm. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, we come to tear down every kingdom, oh God, that is not of you, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, God. And God, we declare, Lord, your glory in the earth realm, oh God. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus, God. And we come right now, God. And God, we bless every child, Lord God. We speak, Lord God, every, over Hallelujah. the generations, oh God. Ages. Lord, from the generation Hallelujah. now and every generation to come, yes, Lord, Lord God. Yes, Lord, Lord, that you have sealed them in this season, oh God. Yes, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, yes. God. And Lord, we come, Lord God, tearing down the assignments of the enemy, God, concerning our babies, our children, our generations, oh God. In Hallelujah. the mighty name of Jesus, God. Lord, you said our seeds, Lord God, shall be preserved as long as we stand, oh God. Hallelujah. And Lord, we thank you right now now, God, that our seeds, Lord God, Lord, will do, Lord, everything <coughs> that you have ordained them to do, God. Ooh, we Jesus. thank you right now, God, Hallelujah. that even if every baby in the womb, Lord God, shall be secured, oh God, in the Hallelujah. word of the Lord on today, God, in the mighty Hallelujah. name of Jesus, God, and we bless you, Lord God, and God, we thank you for boldness in this season, Hallelujah. God. Bless we your thank name. you, bless Lord, for name. being able to withstand the fiery darts of the enemy, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, and God, we bless you right now, God, Lord, Lord, we say bless yes you, to you. your will and your way, oh God. In bless the mighty name of yes, Jesus, Lord. God, and we thank yes, you, Lord, Lord, for your spirit, oh God, that rests ruling the vines on the inside of us, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Lord, for we are equipped with the greater yes, on today, God, yes, and we Lord. will not be fearful on today, Lord. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, and Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we will not be wavering, Lord God, but Lord, we will hear the instruction and follow it out, oh God, and we will stay equipped for the battle on today, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, and Lord, we bless you, hallelujah, God. For your, you are worthy of today, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Hallelujah. Lord. And God, we come right now, God, with authority to set the captives free on today, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. For God, we are not alone, oh God. But Lord, we acknowledge you in all your ways on yes, today, Lord. God. Yes, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. And God, we thank you, Lord God. And Lord, we bless you on today, God. In the yes, name Lord. of Jesus, God. Lord, we walk therein on today, God. And we will not stumble, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. And Hallelujah. God, we bless your name on today, God. And I thank you right now, God, for stirring up every gift, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we Ooh, thank you Lord, right now Lord. for a cry, God. We Move come with, God. oh Lord Move God, God, a spirit of moving, oh God. We yes, thank you, Lord, for giving us our cry back, oh God. In the name of 
Jesus, Lord. God, strengthen us from Babylon today, God. In the name of Jesus, God. As we go forth, oh God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the equipment, God. We thank you, Lord, for the armor, oh God, of your word, oh God. In the name of Jesus, Lord. And we bless you, God. Even as we go after our children, Lord God. Declaring the word of the Lord over their lives, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God. Lord, we go into the enemy's camp on today, God. Lord, declaring and retrieving what is ours on today, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord. And Father, we bless you right now, God. Hallelujah. We thank you right now, God, thank as you, you have went thank before you, us, Lord God. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus, yes, God, Lord. that you have cut the path, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. And Father, we bless you right now, bless God. You. Lord, we give you the glory, oh God. We give you the praise, Lord God. And Lord, we come against the spirit of fear, Lord God. For many are fearful, Lord God. But God, you have not given us the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God. Yes, Lord. Lord, teach us to war, Lord God. Teach us to pray, Lord God. Teach us to intercede, Lord God. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, and we bless you right now, God. Lord, we honor your word, oh God, oh, today, God. Mm. We know, Lord God, there is strength and unity, oh God. Lord, teach us to be unified in the spirit on today, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, and we bless your name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to your name, God. Oh, God, you are worthy on today, Lord. Father, we bless you right now, God. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus, God. And Lord, we glorify you, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that many days from now, Lord God, Lord, we will begin to mount up, oh God. And Lord, we will begin to move by the Spirit, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. And God, we bless you, God, for every day that you release the rhema into the land, oh God. Lord, we receive it on today, God. And Lord, we glorify you in it, God, and we thank you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, God. Yes, and God, Lord. we bless you, Lord, bless because you. you are worthy, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Jesus God. Yes, Lord. And Lord, we declare it to be so, God, yes, in every area and every corner of the earth, oh God, yes, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, and we bless your name, bless God. You. We glorify bless you, Lord, and we receive it by faith on today, God, bless in the mighty name of Jesus, God. And Lord, we say yes, Lord, and we say amen, oh God, in Jesus' mighty name, bless your name, God. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Bless you, Lord. Thank God you, Lord. Bless you, God. God bless you, God bless you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we bless you. We bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Bless Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Lord. Receive it. Receive it by Thank faith. Thank you, Jesus. Receive it by faith. We're going to go Glory two, to your two name, things. As, as my wife was praying, God broke yes, some yokes Lord. off your Hallelujah. life. Many of you are free to be who you've been called yes, to be Lord. as a wife. As a husband, yes, as a son, God. as a brother. There were some yokes yes, uh, of sorcery broke off your mind today. And so we received that in Jesus' name. God. And for, for others, I want you to know, the Lord said to me what I said when I was yes, teaching. Lord. Your children yes, are sorcery Lord. breakers. So I want you to repent for ever thinking that that was a cursed situation. Sometimes God hides the gift in confusion. He hides the gift in confusion. Your children are sorcery breakers. Yes, now begin to declare that. Go back to that prophecy that yes, was given God. to you about your children and begin to water that yes, prophecy Lord. by your confession, verbally confessing that I understand my children now. Thank the millennium, Jesus. the children, yes, the generation of X, the generation of Y. Yes, they, are, they are sorcery breakers and the enemy wants to confuse you about their identity and wants to confuse them so that they never yes, step Lord. into their place. But your children are sorcery breakers. Yes, the Lord want me to tell you that Bless in river. And so don't look at them as a bad situation. If you if they don't even know who their father is, you don't haven't even seen them. Know that that child, that child has in them the destiny to break the sorcery for the time that they are born for their generation, Thank okay? Jesus. And so we're raising up greater generations to know their purpose in God and who they call to do. They are. And what we need and what we need to see in the church and in the move of the church is going to come through the next minds that God has birthed yes, through us, Lord, through it. There's a reason why God let that child come through you. Yes, God. Okay? And so we Jesus. thank you for that. Take heed to the prayer. Take heed to my faith. Don't forget tonight is a covenant couples will be on at 6 o'clock p.m. Standard. Don't miss if you have never come to any of our covenant uh, um, covenant couple session. This is session number six. Please make sure you are here tonight. 
God has a word for you. And you don't have to be married. You can be single. Do you want to be married? Do you want to understand relationships? Do you want to help your children in relationships? Whatever the case may be, there are principles and experiences and wisdom that we're giving out for relationships. They can be brother to brother relationship, sister to sister. But don't miss tonight, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, Covenant Couples Session Number 6. Okay, and for all those who want to sow, you know, you see our PayPal there. We you see uh, yes. our cash out there. We're sowing where we're going. God bless you. We love you, and uh, we'll see you tonight. Okay, don't forget also the cruise, 2021, February. Uh, we're putting the, the the flyers up, Sister Amanda. Go ahead and get that. I don't want you to wait till the end of the year and there's no more cabins left. So we need you to contact Sister Amanda Pearson so that you can. Um, and a son, put that information up. Somebody wants to sew. And so make sure you make that cruise, okay? 2021, we're going on a, a Caribbean cruise. I'll be ministering there. I'll be the only speaker. We're going together and having and, 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 and being blessed on the water. We're going to be blessed on the water. And so God is doing something, okay? And so uh, please take heed to all those announcements. If you feel like God has led you to be a prayer partner at Divine Insight Ministries, uh, please inbox me and my wife. We're looking for people that God has laid on your heart, a burden for this ministry and to help us birth it, to become a midwife and not a murderer. We're asking for midwives to birth us through prayer, to birth the move of what God is doing to cover us. If you feel led by the Holy Spirit, there's a confirmation uh, in your spirit about being that. Please uh, contact inbox me or my wife and we'll begin to set up those prayer uh, partners. Okay, we're looking for four teams and four teams of prayer, okay? So God bless you, love you, and uh, we'll see you tonight at 6 o'clock Central Standard Time for Covenant Couples. Walk in God's favor. Thank you, Lord.